friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hope, and today I have another series review for you. So I have finished the Kiss Quotient series by Helen Huang, and honestly, it was so good. So I just read the last book. I read the series in order. Shocking, I know, but I read it in order, and I really enjoyed it. So to be perfectly honest with you, I read the first book, The Kiss Quotient, a long time ago, but I read The Bride Test and The Heart Principle much more recently. So. If I don't have as much to say about the Kiss Quotient, it is because I read it a long time ago, but I do remember really enjoying it. So, here we are. Let's just dive right in. What an awkward space thing that I just said. Anyway, the first book in this series is The Kiss Quotient. So, in this book, we are following Stella and Michael. So, Stella is like a mathematician type of person. She works with numbers, and she is just super, super into numbers. That's like her favorite thing. And Michael has a like clothing company, but also is working as an escort. So Stella is one, of, she's got Asperger's and that makes it, her romantic relationships difficult. Like the thought of French kissing disgusts her everything. So she decides that she's going to hire an escort for like one night to like learn what she needs to know, you know? So that escort happens to be Michael. So she hires Michael, they meet in a hotel, and of course things do not go according to plan. And they have a fine night, but it's not, um, you know, a perfect, like, orgasmic night. So later she runs into him at, like, a dry cleaning store or something that his family owns, and she's gone there accidentally, and at first he's like, are you stalking me? But they decide that they're going to start hanging out and stuff as, like, friends, and kind of as a couple, so they go to a club together, she goes to dinner at his mom's house, and that's when he kind of finds out that she has Asperger's, and he is pretty understanding because his brother, Kai, does as well, um, and he's pretty understanding, and they grow closer, and he's really helping her to come out of her shell and to, like, experience the world a little bit, and I just really liked it. Um, Michael is struggling quite a bit with, like, his escort job because, like, no one knows about it, it's a secret. But also, they're trying to get their clothing company off the ground, and there's just so much going on with both of them, but they have to see if this relationship is worth it, if they can make this relationship work, things like that. Honestly, I thought it was such a sweet book. Um, she starts kind of getting rid of her routines, but she starts spending more time with Michael, not just getting rid of them, but like changing them up a little bit. So he's like proven to be good for her, and she's helping him to be like more confident in himself and his business and everything else. Just really, really good. So the next book is The Bride Test, and The Bride Test was my favorite of the series. I thought it was amazing. I laughed, I cried, I absolutely loved it. So in this one, we are following Esme and Kai. So Esme is working as like a cleaner at this hotel in. Is it in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam? And Kai's mother has come there um, to interview girls who she she's going to take someone home, basically, to be Kai's new wife, except for Kai doesn't know. So she ends up meeting Esme, and she chooses Esme. But Esme is really hesitant about it because she has a young daughter that she doesn't want to leave. But her family kind of helps her to agree to do this because, you know, her daughter's life could be so much better if she did do it. So she goes to California, and everything is like a culture shock to her. And she's like, wow, like, she's also very nervous. So she ends up accidentally telling Kai that she's an accountant, even though she's not, um, because Kai is like an accountant. So he also has a ton of routines, and Esme starts ruining those routines on day one. But they end up becoming friends and growing closer, and they're doing a lot of things together because she's staying at his house because basically his mom was like, we have a friend coming to visit. Um, but Esme also is one of those people that is always trying to, like, better herself. So she's studying to be an accountant. She's taking English classes. She's working at, um, his mom's restaurant. Like, she's just doing everything while also trying to get closer to Kai, but she hasn't told him about her daughter or anything else. So Kai's a little hesitant and a little standoffish, but then he starts to realize that he really cares about her, too. And I just really thought this one was so good. Like, on when I tell you that I was, like, laying in my bed reading this, like, just crying. I was, like, laying in my bed reading this, sobbing. Like, it's so good. I really love it. And I love how, like, hard, like, how hard Esme works at just everything. She's such a good character. And I love how supportive everyone around her was, even Kai without really meaning to be. And it was just so good. They have, like, a first night together, and, like, it's terrible. Kai's a virgin. He, like, goes to Quan and Michael for help and everything. Like, I think it's just such a cute book. Like, when I tell you, I was just sobbing. Like, I really was. Um, 
like, I can't recommend this one enough. If you only read one book in the series, I 100% recommend The Bride Test. Like, I saw people talking about this on BookTube, like, years ago, and I was like, oh, I'll read that one day. Another one that I'm just like, why did you sit on this? Because it was so good. The last book in the series is called The Heart Principle. So The Heart Principle is Quan's story. We're following Quan and Anna. I'm going to go ahead and preface this by saying this book is quite different than the other books in the series. It is sad. Um, so Anna is a violinist. She, like, got viral fame from this video. And now, then she went on this big tour. But now she, like, can't play. Um, she's seeing a therapist, and her therapist tells her that she's on the autism spectrum which kind of crushes Anna. She also has this horrible boyfriend who decides he wants to see other people to make sure that, like, she's the one. So, then we have Quan. Quan is recovering from testicular cancer. He's in remission, but he's had surgery, and he is really struggling with that, with the way that his body is different, and he's just a little bit insecure right now. So both of them go on dating apps, and they end up meeting one another. They decide to meet up and have a one-night stand because that's what Anna wants. But the one-night stand just doesn't happen. But they continue talking as friends, and they continue hanging out as friends. So basically, they're dating just without the label, which, cool. So Anna's family is super hard on her, and we kind of meet her sister, and her sister's super hard on her and everything. But then her dad has a stroke, and her mom doesn't know it's a stroke. She tells him to lay down, so he goes. To, they finally go to the hospital, and, like, it's really bad. He is awake, but he can't speak, and he can't move, and someone is going to have to take care of him all the time. So the family basically decides that it's going to be them. It's going to be the mom, it's going to be Anna, and it's going to be Anna's older sister, Priscilla. They're taking eight-hour shifts around the clock, and it's heartbreaking because her dad basically is telling her at one point, he basically is able to communicate with her that he wants them to stop. And she doesn't know what to do, so she just keeps doing what they're doing. And it's devastating for her. And her family doesn't really approve of or like Quan. And even though he does really nice things, like he brings them a ton of food from his mom's restaurant, he's there for them. But her family wants her to get back with the ex, Julian. And it's just absolutely heartbreakingly sad um, reading about all of this. And it's hard to read about it, you know? So at the same time, you know, Quan, come, so Quan is the CEO of him and Michael's business, which is like a clothing line for kids. It's going to be picked up by Louis Vuitton, but then it falls through because they say the only reason they're going to pick it up is if Quan steps down. And Quan is like, of course, devastated. And he goes on this like rim to rim run of the Grand Canyon, all kinds of things like that. But it's just got some really tough things going on, honestly. And then there's like an after part where we get the aftermath of what all happens with her dad and how their relationship turns out. And honestly, like, was it a good book? Yes. Was it a downer of a book? Also, yes. Like, it was very sad. And I, I am not one for really sad romances. So this one was kind of a struggle for me. I ended up giving it four stars. Beautiful romance written beautifully, but like, it was tough. Like, will not lie, I thought it was really tough. And I like struggled. So that's it. That's the series. Honestly, I gave all of these really high ratings. The Bride Test was like the one five star out of them, but like honestly, I just loved them all. I thought it's a really good series. They're well written. The characters are so fleshed out. You really feel like they're people that you know. Like just so, so, so good. But also like there are some parts that are really hard. So definitely keep that in mind. But I do recommend this series. I think that it's great. And that is all that I have for you guys today. So I'll see you next time. Bye.